Hi, and welcome to The Bright Balloon, a podcast where I'm sharing bright ideas for your balloon business. My name is Sarah Meyer, and I'm a balloon business owner like you, and I love the creative side of what I do, but I really love the business side, which seems to be the part where most people struggle. So I'm here to help. Each week, I'm bringing you an episode full of bite-sized tips you can use to make tiny improvements to your business. I want you to make more money, eliminate stress, and learn along with me as we grow our creative businesses together. Welcome to The Bright Balloon. Hello and welcome to this episode. Today, you are in for a treat. This is, I think, maybe our meatiest episode ever. Uh, And no thanks to me, but thanks to our guest, Jeff Kelly from Asset Lab. And you may have met him last week if you listened to the episode. He is now a sponsor of the show. So I'm so excited to have him on as a guest. And he is going to school me in this episode about local SEO and website best practices. I take him on a wild goose chase and ask him a ton of different questions about blogging and customer service and asking for Google reviews. Literally, I have a page of notes just from listening to the episode back while I was editing. So enjoy. You might want to listen to this one a couple of times. And I met Jeff for the first time at Balloon Boss Summit in Orlando, Florida last November. And he was one of my favorite instructors because The guy just knows his stuff. Another reason why this is one of my favorite episodes is because I think it is proof that, you know, I don't know everything. There are a couple times where he straight up scolds me. (laughs) And I love it. Even at Summit, I asked him if he could give my website a once over. And in like 30 seconds, he was like, you should change that, update that, that's okay, this needs to move, and I, my face turned into like that emoji with the hearts in my eyes. I just, I I went home and I did a full website overhaul based on the tips he gave me off the cuff in like a, literally less than a minute. Um, he, he's just so well-versed, not only in all things digital marketing, but also how it specifically relates to the balloon decor community. And he talks all about that and this niche that he stumbled upon five years ago and has become just a true expert. So like I said, this is a longer interview. I think it runs about 40 minutes, but instead of breaking this up into multiple episodes, I just wanted to get you all of this amazing information right at the start of the year. I I think there's tons of really good goal setting ideas around some of these concepts, certainly areas where I can grow and I'm sure a lot of you listening can also improve in your business. Really quick, I just wanted to thank our Patreon supporters. I started a Patreon page just kind of on a whim and I have been blown away by people's generosity. So the Patreon, it's like a three or a five dollar tier and basically it's like leaving a tip. If you enjoy the show and you just want to leave a little tip, um, you can join the Patreon and there's a few of us in there um, enjoying some exclusive content. I just dropped my grab and go garland template um, instruction card in there. Um, There will be bonus episodes. There will be extra interviews. So if you are looking to support the show, that is a really great way to do it. And you can click the link in the show notes. All right, let's take a quick break and then get into this awesome, awesome interview with Jeff Kelly from Asset Lab. Ballooncoach.com has been a sponsor of The Bright Balloon since pretty much day one because like this podcast, Balloon Coach focuses on growing your balloon business. I personally love Balloon Boss Mastermind because it is a group that constantly challenges me to grow my business, think about things in new ways, and I'm able to ask questions to other balloon business owners who usually have more experience than I do. From monthly webinars to in-person events and downloadable resources, ballooncoach.com really has it all. So check out the link in the show notes wherever you're listening to learn more about ballooncoach.com. Welcome to this episode, Jeff Kelly. We recently met at Balloon Boss Summit, and you are not a balloon decorator, but you are very involved in the balloon world. And if I'm not mistaken, you said Steve Jones is kind of the one who first kind of brought you into our crazy world of decor. That's right. Yeah. One of our first, don't tell him this, well, he knows this now, but one of our very first marketing clients was balloon designers, Steve Jones. And that's how we were introduced. And my team was introduced to balloon decor. And since then, it's been maybe five years we've been working together with balloon designers. We've worked with many different 
balloon decor businesses now, and we know the niche really well. That's very cool. And well, we met at Balloon Boss Summit, which was in November, so a few months ago. Um, and then I'll see you again at Float, which is yep. at the end of January. And tell us about your business, Asset Lab, what what you do for balloon decorators and twisters. Big picture, we are an online marketing company. So we can help you with everything from your website to your social media. If you want to do online advertising on social or on Google, we can help you with those things. We're also great at search engine optimization, this magic word called SEO that somehow helps your business. And uh, we provide all types of content and online marketing strategy and kind of anything you would want help with in the online space. And big picture, we've got around 40 clients that do balloon decor and balloon twisting. So, you know, this is a this is a niche for us and it's a niche we know very well because we work with clients all over the world on their balloon decor businesses and marketing them. Yeah, that's amazing. And I think that's such a value because I have just started hiring people. For five years, I have been doing everything myself. And I still, I have one very part-time, I guess, employee, but even she is a freelancer. Um, and the more that I start kind of bringing people in, the more I'm realizing how important that they understand what we do. It's like, if you're charging $100 an hour, I can't spend 15 minutes explaining to you what a balloon arch is. You know, like I, it needs to be someone who already has some of that knowledge and you can kind of take from your experience from other people and then, you know, get to those points faster with us, which is, you know, I just want to clarify the value of working with people who, who really know our industry. It's weird and it's, <laughs> it's fun, but it's, we need people who, you know, are not as involved with the creative stuff. I think that's where a lot of us fumble. Like we are artistic, we are creative, we um, know where we want our business to go. We just don't really know how to get it there. So today we're talking about local search, that's right. We're going to talk about local search. So that is the extent of my knowledge, <laughs> the words that you told me to say. So why don't you give us some tips, give us some knowledge. What what can we do? I feel like many of us are like, well, we have websites. We sort of come up on Google. Someone told me once upon a time it was good to blog, but I don't. So like that is, that's where I'm at. What, what should we be doing here? <laughs> All right. So, so what we're talking about is local search SEO. SEO is search engine optimization. And there's really two kinds of search engine optimization. So stick with me here. I need you to listen for just a minute to understand this piece, and then it's going to get a lot easier. So there's local search SEO, and there's website SEO. And there's a very easy to understand difference between these two. We're going to talk about local search today. And local search is all about a search where someone is on their phone or at their computer and they search for balloon arch near me or balloon decor in Dallas or, uh, you know, corporate event decor in Orlando. Each of those searches had a geography tied to it. There was near me, there were city names, right? That is a local search. If someone searches the internet for balloon arch pricing, there's no geography there. Okay. And so that is not a local search. That is something we would be working on if we were working on what we call website SEO. That's conceptual. So we're really focused on the local. And the reason local search is so important is because search engines treat it very, very differently. Search engines treat a local search as a maps search. And so they're looking, the search engine is considering what's on your website. Uh, you know, do you have city names? Do you have a store with a physical address? Do you have reviews where people have, you know, have a business or are tied to a business and that business is near yours? Do you have pages, you know, balloon arches in New York City? <clears throat> do you have content specific to a location? That's really what search engines are going to consider when, you, when someone is using their phone to do a local search. And local searches have all sorts of other great information with them. So you, you know these local searches. If you just talk to your phone right now and you know hit the voice search, and you might be on iPhone, you might be on Google uh, or Android, whatever, any of them is going to be fine, and search for your business name. What's going to come up, hopefully, is a listing that shows the basic information about your business. Your name, your address, if you have a location, 
the, your website link, your social links. Hopefully you've got some reviews. And so there's some reviews showing there. That is a local search result. So is that like when you come up on like the Google map and it kind of shows that, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, that's exactly it. Okay. If you're on an iPhone, right? It's, it's, uh, it's Apple places. If you're on Android, it's Google. And, and that's, uh, that is a local search. You see this when you're on your, your desktop computer too, your laptop computer. When you search for something and you include some sort of geography, you see the maps inset on that page where they've got a few local businesses listed that seem to match what you were looking for. This is all maps information. This is local. This is what local SEO is all about, is about influencing this information, helping search engines understand when to show your business. But we've kind of gone a little too deep. Uh, if we back up, remember what, what you're trying to do when you optimize your business online or improve your business online is you're trying to make it easier for people to find your business and easier for them to contact you because they want to work with you. That's really what search engine optimization is all about. It's about helping your business be easier to find and easier to contact online. That's why it's important because it means leads and it means phone calls and it means customers, right? I have one question. So a lot of balloon people are home-based. Is that a problem? Is that something they can overcome if they don't have a storefront? Oh, it's absolutely not a problem. There are two types of uh, what we would call maps listings. Like uh, map system would be Apple Places or Bing Places um, or Google My Business. Um, there are service area businesses that serve an area, a geographic area, maybe multiple cities or maybe the entire country or whatever it might be. Uh, and there are physical address businesses where you have a storefront where and a storefront is a place where you want the public to come to shop. So if you have a warehouse where you're assembling, but you don't welcome the public there to shop, then you don't have a physical address. You wouldn't want to list that physical address unless maybe you were doing pickups there um, and it was a pickup location. But either way, uh, you know, the e either way we can be successful at local search and coming up in maps, but understand that it's going to look different. Um, if you're standing in a downtown metro area and you search for balloon arches near me, you may or may not see the service area businesses because the, cert the, the businesses with a physical location that are really close to you are going to win that search, essentially, because they're the most relevant. Because if there's one just down the street from you, Google's trying to help you get to that balloon arch business right down the street from you. So what do we do? Like, I'm I'm overwhelmed just listening to you. and it, And I think a lot of... A lot of the internet is just like, oh, the algorithm. Oh, we whatever Google wants to do, Google does. And I feel like it's almost like a easy out. Like, oh, I don't know how to do that, and I can't possibly control it, so I'm just not even going to worry about it. So there are three simple things you should do right now. Uh, if you're driving, you need to stop and pull out the Notes app on your phone. If you're at home, you need to get a pencil and paper right now because I'm about to tell you the three things you should do right now. Like you should pause the episode and go do these three things and then come back and keep listening. So here they are. Number one, if you do not have a Google My Business profile or you do not know what that is, then you need to right now go make yourself a Google My Business profile. You do that by going in your phone or on your computer to http colon slash slash business.google.com. You need to set yourself up with a profile. That's how Google knows about your business and understands the most important information about your business. You also need to go do that on bingplaces.com, Bing as in the Microsoft search engine, B-I-N-G places.com. And you need to go do that on Apple Maps. Those are the three largest search engines when it comes to mapping technology and local search. And so you need to pause the episode right now and go get yourself set up um, on these three platforms. That is the first step because that lets the internet know where your business is and what the proper website is and what the proper name of your business is. And it lets you, your business show up more highly in search. So if you've done those three things, the next most important thing is to generate reviews for your business. And here's why. Imagine Jeff is shopping for balloon decor for a birthday party. And I type in, you know, birthday balloon decor near me. And I get five different businesses that show up on the list. And I don't know any of them. I don't know you. I don't know who you are. I've never done balloon decor before. I'm probably going to decide who to contact or who to scope out online 
by how close you are to me, number one, because that because it's a geographic search. And then number two, by how great a reputation your business has. And the reviews are what show me how great a reputation you have. So the next thing you need to work on once you have these profiles is getting reviews. And I always recommend if you're just starting out or if you're less than 40 reviews on Google that you need to simply focus on Google until you get to 40. 40? 40. Here's why. Here's why. If you have six and I'm looking at your profile and I see these profiles from other businesses, you probably have six friends. You probably just hit up your your friends and family plan and said, hey, I need reviews. Can you all please give me five-star reviews? So I don't really trust a number at all less than seven, right, as a consumer. If you're getting into the 20s, now you're looking pretty legit, right? But I firmly, like, there is no way you have 40 friends and family that would give you a five-star review. Like, I just don't believe that. Like, Like, if we can get your business to 40, clearly people... You know, whatever that score is at 40 seems legitimate. Can you, I know we're going off on a little tangent here, but as someone with 18 reviews, do you have any quick tips of how how to help harvest those? Because I feel like the old, like, you know, send people the link and ask for a review. Like, it. I don't see many results. Like, I would say maybe like one in 20 people actually do it, even after they've already told you they were super happy. There's just... And I'm guilty of it too. Like I get that auto email being like, how do we do? And I'm just like, delete. <laughs> like, how do you, how do you get people to want to do that? Uh, this is a whole topic in itself for sure. The, I would say that the, probably the two most effective methods for generating online reviews are to ask in person okay, and to have the person who provided service to your client ask over the phone. So the ah. in-person ask by the person who gave service is going to be the most effective from, a, you know, how many times did I ask and how many reviews did I get? The next most effective is going to be over the phone. But again, it has to be the person who provided service. Because if if some random person from a company I work with calls me and says, hey, Jeff, would you mind giving us a review? Well, I don't know who you are. You're probably from some marketing company just calling, trying to create reviews for that business, right? I don't even know. Yeah. But if it was the person I worked with and who helped me with my order and delivered those balloons and maybe we had to fix or adjust something, all of a sudden now there's a personal relationship there. Interesting. I'm going to experiment with that because I have it set up in my workflow that a thank you email goes out and I customize it. Like I put little details in there so they know it's me and not a robot. But I'm wondering if I hold on that and my follow-up is a phone call thanking them and saying if you were happy or saying I was happy to work with them and then that I'm going to send them an, a link. Cause don't you still want them to have the link to the Google review? Otherwise they have to search or will they find that? I mean, you want to make it easy, but yeah. I, if you're not doing a next day follow-up call with your clients, you're missing a huge opportunity. That's way bigger than reviews, mm. right? Cause you're going to understand, are they happy? Was there a problem? You know, do they have 10 friends that they want to refer you to right now? I mean like a next day follow-up call for every single project that you deliver is, in my opinion, a critical business activity in balloon decor. Interesting. I love it. And, and you and can I incorporate a, you can incorporate a reviews ask in there. You can imp- incorporate a referral ask in there. Maybe you have a referral incentive. I don't, I don't know, yeah. you know exactly how you're running your business. But uh, if there was a problem, you immediately find out and you get to fix it so that you can have that client be a nice long-term client. Um, but yeah, I, I, I highly recommend in balloon decor uh, that, that you call your clients next day. Amazing. Absolutely. <clears throat> awesome. So we've talked about the basics. You've got yourself a Google, my business profile, an Apple profile, a Bing profile. We talked about reviews as the next thing that's important. The reason reviews are important, remember, is because the customer, a potential customer is going to be looking at a list of businesses and they have to decide who to contact. And the reviews are what's going to show reputation to somebody who doesn't know who you are. If you're an established business and you've got a lot of up and coming competition, you need to stay ahead of them. If you're a new business and you're hustling and you're trying to beat the established competition, you need reviews and you need to overtake them to be considered more and more often by people who are doing that search. The local local SEO and and showing up really well in searches when when somebody's using their phone is going to really change your business. 
if that's something that's a huge gap today, because people will be able to find you locally. You'll be getting more contacts. You'll get more website visitors. You'll get more phone calls, the whole thing. It'll just, it'll float the whole boat as your business is better represented online. Interesting. Now, as a computer person, as a website person, what is, because I'm not doing you justice. You were one of my favorite speakers at Summit. You had so many awesome stories about your potatoes and your businesses. You guys, you got to meet Jeff. Um, You have a whole history of running and owning businesses, not just helping businesses. Um, Is the goal to get everyone to our website or are you a phone person? Like, what's your, what's your preference? What do you think moves the dial? Uh, I think it's up to your sales strategy. Okay. So, you know, uh, when I look across the the core clients we work with, some of them do not want phone calls. They Mm -hmm. literally will send everyone to their form. And if they get a phone call, they're going to have the chat and then they're going to send them to the form. That's what I do. And I just don't know if that's bad, bad practice. No, it's not bad. It's just a matter of what's your sales strategy and what's your sales system. You know, other businesses want the phone call. Um, Mm -hmm. and, and they don't really, you know, they don't have a CRM. They don't use any kind of, uh, customer relationship manager or forms tool to track individuals. They want texts and they want phone calls. It really comes down to simply deciding how you want people to engage your business and then pushing everyone to however that is. Okay. A lot of, a lot of businesses as they grow and they try to build systems and repeatability and, you know, predictable customer experience in, they move to more process based more recipe based for building and, you know, add in a, a customer relationship manager. Um, and in doing that, typically you're going to want to shift people toward filling out forms instead of making phone calls. Mm-hmm. Um, but the important thing is to choose the method you want customers to interact with you with, and then focus on that and drive them into that. So it's sure. great. You know, a lot of people say, um, you know, we hear Dante say, if you've been to, if you've heard his, him speaking before, uh, you know, there's a lot of, exciting sales things we can do and relationship things we can do on social media, on Instagram and on TikTok and other platforms that are emerging. <clears throat> but you don't have control over those. If if all of a sudden the profile's gone, you may have no way to get it back. And so wouldn't it have been great if you had built a relationship with people through your brand, you know, driving them to your website to actually fill in a form or get your contact information or that sort of thing. This is an important consideration. If you're heavily social media and how you sell and build relationships right now, having some strategic planning on your business and what happens if one of these uh, aspects of your marketing goes offline um, is important to consider. Um, And so that's just just decide how you want people to interact with you and then be consistent and drive them to that place. That's that's the most important guidance. Absolutely. Very cool. All right. Well, I have homework already to do um, because I, I don't know if I'm on anything besides Google Maps. Like I know I'm on Google Maps, but like for me, Google is everything. It never occurred to me that Bing even existed still, to be frank. Yeah. <laughs> I like don't even have that in my like head of something to think about. Um, and then the reviews I totally slack on. I have a whole episode how about, about how I got a one star review and it like scarred me for life. And in my defense, it wasn't even about my balloons. It was about my driving and it wasn't even a customer. I just cut someone off, (laughs) but she took it down. So I think there is that fear of getting that one-star review, but I think also it's pretty easy to weed out the psychos when you do read other people's reviews. Like you can see who someone is just like unnecessarily giving a one-star review. Absolutely. And, and, you know, in, in talking about reviews, there are all sorts of really amazing strategies that work. You know, we didn't talk about the ask and what that actually sounds like. We didn't mm-hmm. talk about how you actually ask. We just talked about a couple of methods. Um, there's a whole, there is a whole science behind how you ask and different ways you can ask that work very effectively. And understand that at some point your business is going to get a negative review. There are no businesses out there that have 100% customer satisfaction. So yeah. at some point you're going to get bad reviews. And that's okay as long as your customer service is spot on and you don't have a customer service problem, like an underlying problem. Uh, We've worked with businesses that have underlying customer service problems, and it's a much harder road to improve your your customer service problem in your business than it is to simply ask and get reviews. And if you get a negative review, the best way to deal with it is just get 10 more five-star reviews. It's not a big deal. (laughs) Just just go get them. Didn't you say at Balloon Boss Summit that the reviews are the number one uh, 
indicator for millennials or some there was some age some some demographic oh, yeah. you said it's like the number one thing they look at yeah millennials and younger definitely focus on online reputation as a shopping mm -hmm. indicator as you know where they're gonna who what business are they going to trust with their first contact or their second contact when they're shopping for something so sure. reviews are very important and that's why they come up as soon as we talk about local search you know another another way to think about local search is imagine you had your cell phone and you searched for balloon arch near me and you did it in like a search pattern around your business or mm -hmm. in your your service area right so we're working with a client right now who services dallas fort worth kind of that area of texas with balloon decor imagine that you went to like 50 different places around town on your phone and searched for balloon decor near me We've got the ability now with some of the technology we have to actually build what we call a local search grid. And you can see the search results at every one of those points in your service area as huh. if somebody was standing in that spot with a cell phone. And this is a really great tool that we use when we're providing local search services because we've got a few service packages that we offer there for business owners who don't want to have to worry about it and want somebody else to worry about it. Yeah. But this local search grid is a really great way to understand your competition and where you're ranking against your competition in different neighborhoods or different cities that you serve. And um, and I guess I would just say, if any of you are interested in seeing the local search grid for your business, I'd be happy to create one. Just send me an email at jeff at assetlab.us. Tell me who you are and what your business is, and I'll send you a local search grid so you can get an idea of what that looks like for your business. When, when we do local search work um, and you're on a monthly package with us, then we run that local search grid report every month. And you can see over time the progression of how are you, has your business relating to your competitors in like this really pretty grid showing the entire area you service. So it's a really powerful tool to understand where your business is at now and what needs to be worked on to, to get more leads compared to your competition. The number one question I receive is where do I order my balloons? And that's why I'm excited to tell you about having a party wholesale. Not only do I want to order from great people who really know the balloon industry, but I want a nice selection of products and a really good website. They have it all. Not only is their website easy to use, but it also has updated quantities on all of the products. So you know that what you're ordering is what you're going to get. They have super fast shipping. And even though they're in New York and I'm in Wisconsin, I always get my orders in just a few days. So check out having a party wholesale in the show notes, wherever you're listening for your next order and make sure to tell them the Bright Balloon podcast sent you. Here's what I would say you should do. What you should do is you should only do things that are above board, trustworthy, long-term, positive thinking kinds of things. Okay, okay, so what does that mean? That means no, it would not be a good idea to go put that white on white text on your website and list every single city in there. Well, why? Because that it used to work. It used to work fantastically for search engine optimization. Well, the reason is eventually Google figured it out. And now Google pays attention to text color and background color when they scan your website. And if you do that, you get a negative score from Google instead of a positive score. OK, so, okay, so Jeff, so that was an example of something bad. So what should I do? Well, create pages with content that somebody who is thinking about purchasing from you is actually going to want to see. What does that mean? Don't give me 85 pictures of the exact same bouquet. Give me one or two or one in a short video and then give me pictures of 20 other bouquets that you've done. Sure. If I come to a page, there should always be words on it. There should be a list of some kind, you know, a bulleted list or a numbered list. So if you're giving me a page about and you hear me pick on balloon arches all the time because it's the number one search term in local searches for balloon decor. Hmm. balloon arch near me or balloon arch and then a city name. Um, if I come to a page on your website about balloon arches, I want to see a nice big heading that says balloon arches. And then I want to see some copy, right? Some what's copy copy is words. Give me a paragraph about what about your balloon arches and what you do. If there's a list of different kinds of arches, you, give me a list, put it right there and then give me some photos. And then guess what? Think about what I'm trying to accomplish. I'm trying to decide if I want to purchase from you. So give me an ability to contact you after that gallery, right? It's called a call to action button or a CTA. You might hear uh, in marketing three letter acronym land. Um, but, you know, click here to get a quote or shop now or contact us. Like give me the opportunity to become a client. 
you know, this is a, a this is the absolute cookie cutter basic page pattern we use for balloon decor. Anything associated with an event or a particular classic decor item, it's heading, copy, you know, nine photos or so, and then a call to action. And if you're building those kinds of pieces of content on your website, you're creating pages that people will like to interact with, and you're giving Google great information about what you're doing. But let's talk about blogging, because there's a lot of mystery around blogging. Yes. Please don't blog because you've heard that you have to blog, because you're probably creating content nobody wants to read. Mm. You need to be creating content that people are interested in finding online. And how do you know that? How do you know if they are? Um, go search for whatever the topic is <coughs> that you're thinking about writing about. If you search for it and you find lots of websites talking about it, then there's probably people actually interested in that topic. If you search for it and the results are kind of all over the place and like nothing there is really strong, people probably don't care. Blogging isn't, um, it's important that your website be updated from time to time, but it is not, uh, like we believe in quality over quantity every day of the week. So I would rather see one change to your website in a month if you created a nice piece of content or a new page about some product or service you're selling than I would a weekly blog post about, uh, you know, a random happening, you know, uh, you know, three cats walked by your store or warehouse <laughs> that morning and here's a picture of your cats. No one cares about that. And they're not going to be searching Google for it. And so you've wasted your time as far as your marketing goes in doing that. Get well, and should we be treating these blog posts almost like news releases, like things we're doing, or should it be about stuff we offer? Like either way, will those keywords get in there? Or I'm sorry, this interview is so good. I just feel myself wanting to go in a thousand different directions and I, I can't even stay focused because I just want to know everything. You should really go with your content. You know, if you're writing blogs, you should, you, my guidance is to get out of your own head and think about your customer. Okay. What is your customer doing? What are they trying to achieve? So I live in a little resort town. It's called Lake Geneva. It's not very big, but almost everybody I serve comes from another city or state. They're planning an event in our town, like a wedding or a baby shower or whatever. They're coming. So like a blog post about all the vendors I love to work with or my favorite highlighting certain venues that I like to work in or highlighting our town. Will that send people in too many different directions? Do I need to keep it me focused or is kind of going that route of like how to plan your event here and also use my services? Is, is that a good route or is that too much? Let me pick up, pick that apart in a very particular way. And hopefully if you need to rewind and listen to the question that okay. was just asked again, because I'm going to pick it apart and show you what I mean by Stop thinking about you and start thinking about your customer. Okay, great. So the question was, should I put up a page where I talk about the vendors I like to work with so that people who are coming to my town, you know, they, they, they have some guidance and they know they want to work with me and they want to work with the vendors I like. No, here's why. Because you're thinking about yourself when you wrote okay. that article. You're thinking okay. about the vendors I like to work with. Give me an article about how to plan an event in Lake Geneva. Interesting. Right? Well, how would you, how would somebody come to your town and plan an event there, right? Maybe you have venues, maybe there's wedding venues, maybe there's, you know, corporate conference venues. I don't, I don't know what you have in your town, but give, give someone who is planning an event in your town or in your area or at a specific facility, a nice article about what they need to consider. And of course you're getting to give them options for decor and event planners and these other things, right? And you can absolutely incorporate those things, but spin it around so you're thinking about the person who's actually doing the searching instead of thinking about yourself and wanting to quote, you know, for example, share the vendors or share the venues that you love. Spin okay. it around because if you spin it around and you're solving somebody's problem, which is I need to plan an event in Lake Geneva, what do I do? And your piece of content is the best piece of content out there. They're all gonna, Google's gonna send them to your piece of content. Nice. And now you're going to have your win. And now you're going to have your call to action buttons in that blog post and your pictures of your work and, and that sort of thing. And you're going to give people an opportunity to convert and become clients. Yeah, it's almost nice. It almost takes the burden off of being super salesy. And it's like, just be above board and be a great person <laughs> and really yeah, absolutely. offer help and it, it will pay off. Yeah, be, be above board, be a great person and don't forget to ask for the sale, which means yeah. put a call to action button on there or put a contact form on there. 
right? There's so many blogs out there where you read the content and it's like you get to the end of the page and you're staring at the footer. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, but give them an opportunity to buy from you. Give them a buy button or a shop button or a contact button or something. Like tell them what to do next if they want to work with, with you. That's such a good tip. So, and I can feel myself muddying the waters and making things gray. Is what I'm talking about now more web SEO and not the local SEO because it lives on the website? Yeah, we're very much talking about websites. And in marketing sp- in the marketing space, we're talking about search engine optimization, like the website version of it. Okay. We're talking about what we would call conversion, converting visitors into leads and into customers. So we're very much in the website space. But as you can see, and just where, where Sarah has taken us, these things are very related, right? And there's some very clear, better ways to use your time and worse ways to use your time and better things to hire for and worse things to hire for. So uh, that's why that's one of the reasons why online marketing uh, is is a place where people hire expertise yeah. right? is because there is so much of this and, and what's working changes that white text. The other thing we used to use in ads uh, back in the day was what we called marching ants or flashing ads. If you're old enough, you'll remember looking at ads that like flashed back and forth the background between yellow and black or something like that. Yes. They had these little marching, this little marching pattern going around the outside. Yeah, all those things used to work back in the day. And, and they don't work anymore. And so as those things change, somebody who spends their time in marketing, who knows the niche is able to then solve a lot of those problems for you. You don't have to, you don't have to understand the pattern of, you know, what, you know, which, which services do I put on my Google, my business listing, or what, how do I handle a service area business instead of a, a physical retail store? Yeah, we can, we can handle that for you. We know how to do that. And that's why considering getting an expert in to help in your business in any of these areas. It's no different when you talk about accounting or bookkeeping um, or other areas. You just bring in the expertise. You're getting your money's worth when you do that. Yeah. Can you tell us to uh, tell us about how the service actually works? Because, you know, do we do we just give you our login and password or do we have to have a certain kind of website? Are you going to say like, no, your Wix website that you built yourself is no good? Like wh- what type of service? Um, not what service, but how do you actually provide the service? That's the part I'm a little confused on. Like, do you just log in? Do you tell us what to do? Do you coach us? For local search, what we're going to do in the services we provide is we're essentially going to take management of your Google, your Bing, your Apple, a whole bunch of other business listings out there. We're going to take on management of those. And so what we're going to ask for is we're going to ask for access to them so that you you can add me and my team on there so we can manage your listings. Uh, in some cases, we're going to ask for additional content or information or photos so that we can fill those profiles out 100% so that everything Google could possibly want is all in there. And then as your business changes, if you if you close temporarily, if you have a physical location, you have hours or you have hours, you answer the phone, we're going to want those updates to flow in to us so that we can be pushing those out to all of those platforms online. We offer a higher level of service that also includes managing your website and the local search related information on your website. Like what's your footer look like? Hopefully it has your contact information and your address or your service area list and you know a menu of some kind, right? It, if your website's kind of a mess when it comes to local SEO and you're on that higher tier, that's something that we take care of for you. So by working with us, you're really allowing us to come in and take the management burden of those profiles off of you and your team. And you're letting us and our expertise and seeing what's working and changing in local search you're letting us uh, take the opportunity to to be bringing you up to date consistently with what's working in local search, and that's the same if we were doing a website SEO package. Um, some uh, some balloon decor businesses need that because of the level of competition they have or the type of client they have, um, and those are so those are very common tactics. But in general, when you work with us, we're we're taking on management, and you don't have to worry about it. Very cool. And I again, I just want to reiterate that like it's very cool that you are so involved in the balloon space. Cause I would be really hesitant to do that to someone who wasn't, you know, just like, okay, take over. And then they make all these changes. And I'm just like, Oh, you have no idea what I do. <laughs> yeah. It's very true. And, and my experience in learning about your businesses and your niche and your clients and what's working and not working in balloon decor, I've been kind of fascinated in how sp- specific the tactics are that we have now for a balloon decor business. If you call us and you say, hey, Jeff, we need a new website or, hey, Jeff, we've got competition that we're trying to deal with. Or, you know, when you call us and you're a balloon decor business, 
the amount of expertise, the patterns we have, the things we know that work and doesn't work, it's a lot more vast than I expected when I first started working with Steve five years ago. Yeah. Right. I expected we were working with another event based and decor, you know, general decor based business. But balloon decor and balloon twisting are very unique in how people shop for them and in what works in in sales and marketing. Very cool. Well, if people have more questions or want to work with you, um, what is the best way for them to get in touch? And you also said that you had a special offer for listeners. So please feel free to always email me. You can email me at jeff at assetlab.us. You can also come scope us out online. You can visit assetlab.us to learn more about my team and the services we offer. And if you would like to get that uh, search grid report so you can see how your business ranks at all these different spots in your service area or the community you're serving, I would love to send one over to you. Um, you can toss me an email. You can hit the website, fill in the form. If you're a phone person, you can call us. It's 844-488-4567. And guess what? If you go to Google and you type in Asset Lab, you're going to find all of those things. You're going to find the phone number and the website, and uh, right? Because we do local search SEO. And you're, of course, you're going to find my business just like you would any other. And we'll put that all linked in the show notes too, wherever people are listening. So they can just click over. And we'll also see you at Float. A lot of people are going to Float, right? This Yay. is going to air mid-January. And this, that's the last week. So people can uh, see you in the classroom or at a booth, where will you be? Please come on down to the exhibitor hall. I'll be in the exhibitor hall and I'd be happy to talk to you about what you have going on and your latest competition and your marketing questions and whatever it might be. Well, very cool. Well, thank you so much. I'm so glad we got to touch base again and you will be back at Summit next year, yes. which is in November. At the time of this recording, I believe it's more than half sold out. There's only 100 spots total. So if you are interested in going to Summit, like, do not drag your feet. I think it will sell out long, long before we get to November. So make that investment. And I will be there. Jeff will be there. Lots of other great educators. Um, well, thank you so much. This was this was so great. I'm so sorry. I was like uh, bringing us all over the place because I have so many questions. But that's usually a good sign that you should come on again. Yeah, it probably is a really good sign that I should come on again. Thank you so much, Sarah. And thanks to all of you listening. Um, go back up, listen to it again, and grab the gems out of this for sure. That wraps up this episode. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, I tried to keep it bright and light in a few minutes or less. I'll talk to you next time. For more information about any of the resources or courses mentioned in today's show, please head to thebrightballoon.com or check the show notes wherever you're listening.